The Secret of Joshua That Many Do Not Know Joshua was one great man who knew how to move and act as soon as God spoke. Everything God said to Joshua, he moved to do it, which was why he could walk well in Moses' shoes after his demise. God desires an obedient lifestyle, where we obey his voice whenever he instructs us. This is why we must desire courage, just like Joshua, to overcome every form of doubt that keeps us from moving forward with God's instruction or plan for us. Joshua chapter 3 verses 1 to 17 The Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to magnify and exalt you in the sight of all Israel, so that they may know that just as I was with Moses, I will also be with you. You shall command the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Joshua said to the Israelites, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Hivite, the Perizzite, the Girgashite, the Amorite, and the Jebusite. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over ahead of you, leading the way into the Jordan. So now take for yourselves twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one man from each tribe. Joshua learned how to move when God wanted him to, and it made all the difference in his life. Naturally, a farmer doesn't have the luxury of an entire year to plant certain crops because there are only specific months in a year that he can plant. Sadly, if he misses the planting season, that means he has missed out of his productive cycle for that year. He may have to wait for the next planting season. Jesus helped us understand how precious time is in John chapter 12 verses 35 and 36. So Jesus said to them, The light is among you only a little while longer. Walk while you have the light. Keep on living by it, so that darkness will not overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. He is drifting aimlessly. While you have the light, believe and trust in the light. Have faith in it. Hold on to it. Rely on it so that you may become sons of light, being filled with light as followers of God. Jesus said these things, and then he left and hid himself from them. When he spoke of light, he meant we are children designed to walk in revelation. So he admonished that they should walk while they still have revelation, because the revelation will not be there forever. Abraham also had moments where he had to decide what to do with the picture God was showing him. Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 5. He obeyed God immediately. Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 5 says, Now in Haran, the Lord had said to Abram, Go away from your country, and from your relatives, and from your father's house, to the land which I will show you, and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you abundantly, and make your name great, exalted, distinguished. And you shall be a blessing, a source of great good to others. And I will bless, do good for, benefit, those who bless you. And I will curse, that is subject to my wrath and judgment, the one who curses, despises, dishonors, has contempt for you. And in you, all the families, nations of the earth will be blessed. So Abram departed in faithful obedience, as the Lord had directed him, and Lot his nephew left with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he left Haran. Abram took Sarai his wife and Lot his nephew, and all their possessions which they had acquired, and the people, servants which they had acquired in Haran, and they set out to go to the land of Canaan when they came to the land of Canaan.
You don't have to procrastinate, thinking that you've your whole lifetime to respond. Because everything, including revelation, are time-bound. If you respond early enough, then good for you. But if you respond late, you may have yourself to blame at the end of the day. Paul's Attitude to Revelation Paul described how he responded promptly to God's directive in Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 to 24. But when God, who had chosen me and set me apart before I was born, and called me through His grace, was pleased to reveal His Son in me, so that I might preach Him among the Gentiles, as the good news, the way of salvation. I did not immediately consult with anyone for guidance regarding God's call and His revelation to me. Nor did I even go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went to Arabia and stayed a while, and afterward returned once more to Damascus. Then three years later, I did go up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas, Peter, and I stayed with him fifteen days. But I did not see any other apostle except James, the half-brother of the Lord. Now in what I am writing to you, I assure you as if I were standing before God that I am not lying. Then I went to the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown by sight to the churches which were in Christ in Judea, Jerusalem and the surrounding region. They only kept hearing, he who used to persecute us is now preaching the good news of the faith which he once was trying to destroy. And they were glorifying God as the author and source of what had taken place and all that had been accomplished in me. He responded in a business-like manner because he saw it as a serious assignment. When you see a revelation as a serious assignment, you won't procrastinate or delay in your response. God won't take you seriously if you do not take his revelation seriously. Noah's Attitude to Revelation God spoke to Noah about his intentions to destroy the earth, but gave Noah a lifeline with very heavy tasks. Noah didn't procrastinate, despite not having the expertise to build the ark and the enormity of the tasks, but he went straight into action immediately. God unveiled the plans to him in Genesis chapter 6, verses 12 to 22. God looked on the earth and saw how debased and degenerate it was, for all humanity had corrupted their way on the earth and lost their true direction. God said to Noah, I intend to make an end of all that lives, for through men the land is filled with violence. And behold, I am about to destroy them together with the land. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make in it rooms, stalls, pens, coops, nests, cages, compartments, and coat it inside and out with pitch, bitumen. This is the way you are to make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. 450 feet by 75 feet by 45 feet. You shall make a window for light and ventilation for the ark, and finish it to at least a cubit, 18 inches from the top, and set the entry door of the ark in its side, and you shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. For behold I, even I will bring a flood of waters in the earth, to destroy all life under the heavens in which there is the breath and spirit of life. Everything that is on the land shall die. But I will establish my covenant, solemn promise, formal agreement with you, and you shall come into the ark, you and your three sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing found on land, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark, to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of fowls and birds, according to their kind, of animals according to their kind, of every crawling thing of the ground according to its kind. 
two of every kind shall come to you to keep them alive. Also, take with you every kind of food that is edible, and you shall collect and store it, and it shall be food for you and for them. So Noah did this according to all that God commanded him. That is what he did. We must note that revelation fades when we do not put it to work. It is easy to blame others for the delays we see around us, but it is much more necessary to value the revelation our Father shows us so that we can act on it urgently. It is important to move when the revelation is fresh so that the impact can be exactly the way God wants it. Any time God speaks to us or opens our eyes to clearly see His purpose and plans, we can't help the excitement that comes with it. Whenever God shows us divine secrets, it isn't for us to become happy about our access to knowledge, but it is the gift of a new responsibility that has to be taken seriously. God reveals depths about different issues to us, because in that season, there are different purposes to accomplish that will not just change us positively, but will also transform the lives of those around us. Remember what King Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, that there is a season, a time appointed, for everything and a time for every delight and event or purpose under heaven. When God speaks to us about a change of lifestyle, steps to take or on what to do in certain situations, but we waste so much time delaying instead of summoning the courage to take the step, we are simply forgetting that time and opportunity are both very important tools for the fulfillment of God's grand plans. When we play with God's instructions instead of obeying, we may never get that opportunity again. Let us pray. Father, thank you for being the rock of my help. Thank you also for speaking to me and opening my eyes to receive insights that are meant to build me up. Just like Joshua, I ask for courage so that I can move when you speak to me and so that I can act on every instruction you have for me the way Abraham did. Help me to value time in Jesus' name I ask. Amen.